Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson. It's been a while, but today we're going to be doing Captain Jack Sparrow. Anyway, it has been quite a while. I have missed doing this. It has been incredibly bonkers for many, many reasons. Anyway, I hope all you guys are fine and well, and we will be doing the drawing. But do remember that there are lots of How to Draw lessons. There are some very, very simple, basic ones. We have, oh, obviously, the nice and easy how to draw Olaf. There's things, all the portraits. There's lots of cartoon characters, Toy Story, all those kind of things. But there's lots and lots of portrait videos using those basic techniques. And you can learn to draw. Like I say, I have the trusty 2B pencil. We will be going through everything on how to draw. And I hopefully, again, it's just been a very crazy time in the last couple of years from 2020 to now. Anyway for everybody but I have still have lots of work to do but I want to do these lessons and I want to have fun encouraging you all to draw I want to demystify drawing please do use the hashtag drawing with Billy I will get some more uh, videos of your drawings up on there and again hopefully I can get a lot more done and there will be some simpler videos as well and some freehand ones not just these full-on portraits but again we have Ariana Grande we have Spider-Man Tom Holland, we have Iron Man Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. These are great videos, and there's lots of others. So we do have Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, and then the whole Harry Potter series, where there's lots of Harry Potter characters. I want to do more of those. And so many other possibilities. Again, I am just going to do the drawings that I would like to do, and there's, there's shed loads. So thank you for... Uh, enjoying the tu tuition and we will get on with the drawing now again people keep on asking uh, about the dimensions and I always put the info of the dimensions at the beginning now so if you check the banner here here we have an A4 piece of paper now there is a grid and this helps you to build the drawing up and this grid is two centimeters 20 millimeters this is a4 paper which is 29.7 tall by 221 uh, centimeters wide so that's 210 mil by 297 and the grid is every two centimeters and we have a to j and 1 to 14 now again I've done this in pencil you can see this it is a bit faint but here you can see I've got a, just a piece of paper with it drawn on very, very dark using felt tip pen. Again, check out the video in the description uh, and in the cards for how to lay down this grid. And there's a video showing you how I lay out this grid completely for the lesson. Now, this grid helps an Old masters used it. Current artists, world top artists use a grid. There's nothing wrong with it. People go, oh, it's cheating. No, it isn't. You can freehand draw. There's lots of freehand drawing lessons on here as well, uh, where I use cartoon characters, which is how I learned how to draw way back when I was a child, many, many moons ago. Now, the thing is, is I use a grid because it helps, and it helps you to put things together. Now, again, I also have... Uh, how to draw anything, how to draw literally anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house or anything else. That's what I say in the video. Again, link in the cards and in the description to that particular video. It's only about 20 odd minutes long. Ignore the background music, but that's now had more than a million views and it's helped a lot of people. And again, just using shapes. So we're going to use the shapes to build up a drawing. I just want you to have fun. Enjoy your drawing. Enjoy drawing the things that you want to draw. I started by drawing cartoon characters and film characters, and that's what we're going to do. But now we are, with the trusty 2B pencil, going to get in and start drawing. And I'm going to use the grid, but also put these shapes in. So you can see how. You can just go into the grid uh, using... The grid to just draw the outline down without using shapes and so it's been a while i'm just getting back into this 
but I use the shapes so that you can actually see how you can build a drawing up freehand when you get more and more confidence. But as with Olaf, using a grid actually helps and you can build up the shapes. But I will do more videos, uh, quick freehand drawings, the maybe half an hour to an hour maximum. But we're going to start with drawing Jack Sparrow and we're going to put shapes in. So you can see here on C3, this is a bit like the game Battleships. So here we have this kind of bone thing going through. I mean, he's just covered with stuff. There's so many bits and pieces. So we can kind of do battleships and we can see there to the left of the D line above the two that we've got the mark of this bone that comes through. And then it comes down here and on the B line, just underneath the four, it's going to come down and then we want to draw. This is just a long rectangle. It's like I say, it's like a pencil. So this is a long rectangle and a simple shape. Now, this comes up and between the D and the E, it curves around. But I'm just going to draw a box for now. So as you've got this simple idea. Now, some people say, oh, draw it a lot darker so but i'm drawing the basics down i draw this line on darker than it needs to be you can draw your grid on a lot lighter so i do this just so that you can see it so there's the bone and coming down here we've got a little rectangle which is that bit of rope and then we've got another little rectangle which is the rope going around tying it into his hair here you can see the side of his hair is like a triangle just a, a nice simple triangle so you can see just a triangle there built on the top and then again just a curve going over the top you got like a little cheese piece there a little cheese wedge and we're just drawing shapes so again down here to the side of the F we are coming down to the four And that's where those bone kind of trinkets are. A little circle below the two, little ellipse, and a little circle for the top of that bone, and the top of that bone. But I can't, if I draw on really, really hard, you won't see everything that you need. Now, see, that's already down way too far so the bone comes halfway and we've got an ellipse for the bottom of the bone and then we have another piece that comes down and I want a little rectangle coming through the four line and that then is split into three and then we've got Dead on the right hand side, we've got this little kind of triangle shape for that bone. And then on the center, we've got this last one that comes down underneath the four. And that is that bottom part of that dangly kind of trinket bit. So again, here now, from the F, We've got a diagonal line coming across to the G and then we come out just you can see a little curve coming over and then we've got a rectangle coming down again below the four. And this comes down to about halfway in between four and five and we draw that line over and then we want this curve coming right the way round and it comes up to join below C4. And then we've got a line coming down for his hair. Again, the top of his bandana that goes out and over. And we can see that little pyramid shape at the top there, a very flat pyramid. 
and we come out through the G and here you've got a little triangle and that hair comes back in. So he's just got the top part of his hair and his bandana and the top of his head appearing. And then here to the right of the G line between four and five, we've got this flick of hair coming out. And that's the hair that goes off. And then we've got a, I mean, there's just so many shapes. It's just bonkers. There's going to be a lot in this. So, and people have asked for Jack Sparrow for quite a while. So I'm going to come across and we're going to come underneath six and we've got the bottom of his nose. So we've got a little V shape with a flat part at the bottom. And then there's a rectangle. And then I'm going to put little There's a banana shape. That's for the dark of the underneath of his eye. Got a little rectangle for his eye. And then we want just a little semicircle. That's where his eyeball is going to be. Now his right eye is in between E and D. So again, we've got this kind of banana shape. I'm going to draw a rectangle at the top and then another little semicircle which will be his right eye pupil. A little line coming down. Now we've got shadow shapes so you've got a kind of triangle there, light shadow, where his cheek is. His cheek comes down and we can see here we've got this X on the side of his face. That's going to show up. But we've then got this braid that comes all the way down to the 9 and touches the D. So we've got this, like the bone, we've got this long, slightly wobbly rectangle. And then coming down between 9 and 10, little diamond, little rectangle. And then we've got this feather that comes down between the 8 and comes up to the 6. So again, just draw a rectangle and a triangle at the top, line down the middle. And then the bottom bit of the feather coming onto that braided bit of hair, the blonde bit that comes down. Here we've got a, if you just draw it, a little ellipse. And that's that little trinket on his hair there. And then we can come down. And we can see that the braid is kind of in the centre. So we want a rectangle coming down to the 11 and then it comes across and comes over to the 13. So there's another rectangle and that's that braid. And then a rectangle at the top. Now here we want a rectangle for his moustache. And using the grid it allows you to start anywhere. So it's more like a parallelogram this is. So you've got Rectangle there, and then again on the left side of his moustache, that appears there. Then you want his mouth, which is kind of on the third line, the centre of his mouth. You've got a little V for the top of his lips, and then just a nice curve semicircle shape and that's the bottom. Then you've got a little kind of cup shape, mug shape coming down which is going to be the beard part. 
I'm just drawing a rectangle over E and F. That's the bottom part of his beard. And then here you can see, and it goes through the D7 line, we've got his jawline and a little thin triangle going up. And then between F and G, the bottom part of his beard, a little parallelogram again going off. And the side of his face. Now again, coming down to the F9 here, we've got this braid again. So we've got a long thin tube like a straw that comes down and then we just need that to curve a little bit through those two squares. And that's getting there. Like I say, we're just building up using simple shapes. So again, here with all of these trinkets now, We've got a long tube coming down to the eight. Then we can build that up in between and down here on the nine, we've got an ellipse, little rectangle, rectangle there underneath the eight. little circle, rectangle with a curve at the top and bottom, rectangle, that's right on, see that needs to come over a little bit, that rectangle does. Then we want an ellipse, and then a long rectangle, a taller rectangle, and then another little kind of square shape. Again, there'll be a swirl in that, but that's later. That's when the detail comes in. Small kind of square, then a rectangle, and then that goes underneath the hair. Now again, next to that, we've got a long tube again, and that comes all the way down to the 11. And that's that braided bit of blonde hair with a point that comes just underneath the 11. Some kind of shape underneath. And then we've got his dreadlocks that come out of the side. Now that comes down, we've got a big triangle over to the 10. So we come over to the 10 and you can see how you've got this triangle shape, but then you've got long threads of the dreadlocks. And so that comes down, the big thick one in the centre comes down to below the 13. So we've got the ends there and that's got to go just indicating the shape and then the same thing. So this comes down to the 11. That's where the secondary one is and then you've got the outside one. Now you can see here straight away his left shoulder coming out below the seven over to the J you've just got a nice simple triangle and then you can it's higher than that and then you've got his top of his shoulder you've got a triangle there now you've got his waistcoat you can just bring the edge down of the waistcoat as that comes down you've got the belt buckle so you've got his amazing belt buckle, so we want the belt that goes in and comes up underneath this braid. So this is between the 8 and the 9. So the belt comes down underneath the 10 through to the centre. And then the actual buckle itself, we've got a rectangle. Then we've got shapes inside. So we've got a couple of little rectangles and a circle and a triangle. And that will allow us to create the shapes afterwards of the belt buckle. And then that comes around the edge, the metal. The top part, so we've got a little circle And then a rectangle that comes down 
and you can see here the centre of the belt that comes through and there's another rectangle shape and we can build the outside of the buckle so again come down you've got this imagine the centre line coming right the way through and it mirrors what's on that side so here you can see we've got this kind of diamond shape and then we've got a little circle a little triangle and that's going to match that side and the same on this side just put a circle and a little triangle and that's the belt buckle and here we've got this thread that comes down of his hair and you see how it comes out underneath and that goes right to the bottom then on the 12 H so H12 you can see here we've got a long rectangle and that's the braiding on his waistcoat and then the same thing on H13 and you've got three lines so you can go above and then you've got H11 just above there we can bring another line down and then we've got that rectangle for that dreadlock that's coming down over there <clears throat> so coming off his beard now we want coming down underneath the nine so underneath the nine just to the right we want a little little circle little square that's the end of his plaited bit of the left part of his beard and then that just ticks around little kind of lower banana shape then again coming up got a little V but we want just that straw shape and then just a slight C coming down and then we've got a little rectangle and another little rectangle for that kind of green bead and then that curves underneath and that's going to be the side of his right hand plait coming off his chin and then we've got this little curve shape coming there out from underneath the belt buckle then on the 11 line here we've just got a little rectangle shape for that light bit coming up on the 10 between B and C and little rectangle little square at the bottom you got that red shape one behind now here we've got these curls so there's a D shape but a triangle coming at the bottom so you can see you've got the front of a D and it just the key so you can see it's, it swirls like S's C's and S's and that curve goes up and you can build it with shapes so here we've got a little triangle that goes up up to the seven and then a little rectangle and you can see how it's going to build the waves up just using those shapes now again the hair on the right side which is going to frame everything comes down to the seven and we've got just you know just indicate some wavy shapes but then you've got his shoulder and his waistcoat on the right hand side and that comes down through the 10 and goes up to the 8 and the dark it comes out and we want that line going all the way down there I mean this is all going to be dark and then on the 12 we've got a little rectangle with a circle underneath and then this hair comes down again you've got that nice blonde bit of hair and then just you know simple curve shape going there and then his right shoulder through the 10 you just got a triangle shape there and then behind you've got a rectangle for the dreadlock going off the back now that already 
is using the grid just to put simple shapes down. Again, you heard me mapping everything out. It's very, very simple, but that gives us basic plotting. Now I'm going to go over and do an outline and I will press on harder so as you can actually see a more detailed outline and you can go straight in and just do the outline literally going kind of dot to dot but this helps you build up your hand and eye coordination just going to sharpen the 2b pencil so i've got a sharp point i'm now just going to use a piece of paper so that i don't smudge everything as we now build up the detail line now again using the grid you can go straight in and start the detail you don't have to do, and I might actually do a video where I just start the detail straight away, <clears throat> the detail outline, so you can see how it is. And I might even do a video where you can't see the grid, but it'll be there, so you can literally see how you can get the drawing down. Anyway, so I'm now going to start, and we're going to build up the detail on our good Captain Jack Sparrow. So we're going to start and this is just below the C4 line to the right of the C on the 4 and we're going to do is bandana and you can see how it comes across and it comes across just above kind of halfway point on the C and then it just below the halfway point, sorry, the C, on the, the D, and then over to the E. Then we come across to the F, and we're still going down, and this is like its lowest point, about a third. And then we're going to start to come up, and then over here towards the G, and that's the halfway point. Now I'm doing this line very, very dark. You don't have to. Again, I might do a video so that you can literally see how I do. A, well, you just look at the time lapses that I do and uh, and you'll see me laying the outline down very, very carefully and lightly, not as dark as this. So check out any of those drawing time lapses that I've put up of my full drawings. So now we're going to come out. So this is like three quarters of the way over, just above the halfway point. And that's the edge of his bandana. Now we're going to go up to the three and it's still to the right. I'm going to come down. That's the edge of the bandana. Now we come up between G and H above the three. And we've got to come up and across. And that's the curve as it's following it around his head. Now, as we come up over the two between G and F, we come up. We come up to that bone kind of trinket that's draping over the front of his bandana. Now, on the third, that just drops down a little bit behind the bone. Now, we've got this little kind of woggle. So we've got a little horizontal comes through the F. And then we just want a little kick up following that line. And you can see how we come over and we touch the D line just above the two and it comes down. And that's the main outline shape of his bandana. Now, again, there is a lot of detail in this. We've got all of those flowers. Now, I'll probably come back and we'll do that at the end. There's a lot of detail in this image. It's going to take a bit of a while, but I'm just going to get the basic outline down first. And then we're going to indicate those flowers on his bandana. Again, if you check out the How to Draw KSI, he's got an interesting bandana and that, that took a bit of a while. But again, using the grid and using simple shapes, you can master any complex image. And again, it's amazing to see young people do this. Now again, between the D and E above the one line, we've got the top of the curve of the bone that's through his hair. So it's about on the quarter so we've got half quarter so that curves round and then comes down to the D line and we just want a couple of curve shapes and that's the string on the bone that's tying it to his hair now 
just yeah it's pretty much on the we've got this little so imagine just a very slight D shape we've got this little rectangle and that's this rope coming out of the hole in the top of the bone part and that's the little bit of string that curves out and then we've got a little circle that's underneath the one don't go anywhere near the top line and that's the shadow that's inside now we curve down and we follow this line that we've built up that we put down and we put this long rectangle in and we're now going to follow the line carefully looking at the reference and Again, the reference image will be on my community page on my YouTube channel and also for the patrons, so that's good. I didn't say you should become a patron too. So we're going to come down and C3, the edge of the bone goes right through that. Now we're going to come over, follow the line trajectory down. We've got this little triangle of white here below B4. And we want to come out and through to about halfway and we curve around and that's the front edge of the bone now again we follow down from the top and we come down following the drawing line that we put down and we've got a little bit of hair that actually comes across so we can just indicate that and bring the edge Now, hair, we're going to do the outside part of his hair. Well, we've got a little C shape here first. So from the string, we can bring that down to the centre. You've got that light part that's going to show up. We've got the hair that comes down. Draw hair, if you can, in the direction that it grows. It's more natural. And you'll have heard me say that in many other videos. Again, check out like Ariana Grande uh, when I do the section on her hair. And we follow the curve down, comes through the C line, got a little triangle there, and then it's just, it's not dead straight again. So we can just kind of wave the line as it comes down. We need to come underneath the little triangle of light there between the B3 line. And then we come down to where the bone is, and then we just curve through. And that's on about the third point. So you've got a C shape there as the hair comes around. And then light wispy bits coming down. And already you can see we've got a nice darker outline showing up. Now again, here we've got this triangle shape and this is the parting in his hair. So that comes across below the one line. And then we come across to the F. You've got all that dark that's going to be underneath. A little triangle there of light. Again, we've got this pyramid of a little kind of hill. It's not a pyramid. A pyramid would be much taller and sharper. And then that comes across above the one where it goes through the F. And just comes through about on the third line. Curve across through the G. And we've got this triangle here, curves down and comes inside. So the hair's got to go inside the bandana. Otherwise, you know, whatever it is, it's got to be coming in here because the bandana's holding it down. Then we want this nice wispy hair coming out the side. Follow the C curve. You know, C, imagine the hair coming down. It's like a C shape there. And it comes out underneath, comes across, and it's about on the halfway point going through the H. And then we've got these wispy bits. And then we've got the dreadlocks. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> now. 
Now, there's a lot of complex shapes. So here, coming down to the G6, we've got the side of his cheek going up into the bandana. So we come down just to the right of the G line. That comes down and then just kicks across and it comes through the third above the six. So that's his cheek coming out. And you've got that nice dark line coming down. And then this comes down just to the right between F and G. And his jawline comes under and it comes about halfway. So his jawline's actually lower because right at the edge of his chin you've got this hair of his kind of strange goatee beard. Now we want this curve just inside the F. We're on, it, it, it's not flat, it, it, it's coming across slightly diagonally. And that comes across and then goes up below is about on the third then you've got like a slight darker shadow and we can follow that shape again it's not a dead straight line skin and flesh and bone and muscle isn't dead straight so if you draw a straight line with a ruler like these grid lines it isn't it's got to be more organic and there's all strange shapes on our Jack Sparrow so again we curve and you can see it's just above the D7 line. And then it kicks up. We go up. I say it's not. The hair's dead in the, It's not on the third and it's not in the centre. So it's just to the right of the centre line. And his cheek goes up and then you've got this braid. Gosh, there's a lot in that. Again, it's just as it goes up to his bandana, that's where it's quite dark. And that's the shape of his skin formed by his beard and his hair around the outside. That's quite a nice, simple shape. Now, We come up and I won't do his face just yet. I've just got that shape in so you can see. <clears throat> now we're going to do the bones. We'll start from the top. And right on the two line to the right of the F. So you've got the centre. We've got this little circle, little ellipse. And then we've got the shape of the bone that comes out. got an ellipse at the bottom of the bone got a little could be a button that little circle little tie that goes round and then dead on the two line we've got another little tie strap and the bone comes up above the bandana that's about on the third little knobble at the top again little you see that's like a heart shape there at the top but the bone comes in rather than finished off so you've got the top of a heart nice and simple that makes the shape for us now you've got the red bead just on that to the right of the center line. Now you've got these three kind of little stone things in this rectangle that we drew. There's one, there's two, there's three. And then we want this little bone shape here.
and then we've got this D shape kind of bone again we can build this up it's all on about the third line so we need to just correct so there's that little kind of D triangle shape and then we've got a little circle and then we've got this it's like a well it's a long rectangle but it's got like a Y shape at the top it's got this little Y literally just drawn a Y there and we can draw the edge down that comes down through the four that curves underneath and then go out it's like a kind of flower of R shape now you can see we've already got the nice shape of the beads coming down onto Jack's bandana now again we can put this crease line in so in this little square here between G and H underneath the four we've got the crease line there then if we come up between uh, that was below four and five but we've come in between three and four we've got another one that goes diagonally Again, you can use the reference of the little shapes that you've got on there. Another little crease. Crease underneath. And if we come over on this side, we've got the edge of his hair. You can see how it comes down here, comes behind, and that gives us the shape that comes down. So you can follow the hair coming through the bone, and then that comes through the three line, and comes down to the C4. And then we've got two creases here that come across underneath the four line. Kind of a little softer one on the four line between three and four. Kind of just below the center another one above and then coming between three and two that goes up through the center and there's a lot of our shapes already for the top part of his head now again there's so many interesting shapes will work on the outside and then come in so we're going to do the wider shapes first and then we'll do the detail on the inside like kind of come across so I'm going to follow this dreadlock down so to the right of H between five and six we've got the dreadlock again just like through the bone we come down the shape comes cuts through on about the quarter point on the six line and then that comes down just to the right of the center line and then that's going to come and hit the i8 and that comes down even further to the nine kind of on the center and we're into like dark shadowy bits here now We've got a darker line so that comes up through the eight and joins on and then that dark so we've got now we've got this light part that we can see so right on the i9 we've got some light hair twisting down so we need to just leave the paper i mean you can use paint or tipex or <clears throat> correction fluid to put your highlights on or pastel pencil but I try, I try and let the paper shine through now there's the shapes in between of the hair that white part coming down between 10 and 11 now we want the dreadlock coming down between 10 and 11 
kind of curves and then going up next to the, the big central thicker one and then we've got all the cross hatching to sort on there but anyway I'm going to sort out the shoulder coming down to the eye and you see it just we've got the diet we've got the triangle but you want this fabric to flow and fold so it comes down and you've got a couple of little bumps and then it jumps up goes across and goes right through the J and then the shoulder goes off to the edge and then the curve of the waistcoat comes down between J8 curves comes right underneath to the 9 cuts through the J9 and comes off into the shadows now again we've got these creases here so just follow the lines and track them up and they help and again we've got all of this patterning but we've got creases in as well this is going to take a bit of a while and I just hope you're having fun because I am just sharpening the pencil again <clears throat> so now we are going to carry on coming around his hair and we've got this lovely dreadlock coming down between G and H now this comes down over the six about on the halfway line again it's kind of fuzzy so you can kind of wiggle the line a bit again you don't have to do the outline as dark as I am doing so that you can see and then we come down to the nine and it's pretty much right on the H9 intersection and then this just carries on coming down and you see it comes down so we've just got like these funny shapes but it, it, it's not a straight line and we can see here between 10 and 11 that it's kind of on the third and then just to the inside so we can Woggle that line down and then down to the 12 that is on about the center line And then it comes down to the 13 on the eye and then goes down into the dark <clears throat> And then if we go back up and it's just like some kind of giant tube And it curves around cuts through underneath you can see there's just a little bit of a gap there between the eye and the 12 in that corner and it keeps coming up and then we've got a nice kind of little d shape there of hair in between those crisscross knots of the the string that are tying and we come up and that's just to the right of the 10 of the center right of center then comes up just to the left of center and it goes up on to about the quarter line on the eight again just nice bobbly right up to the intersection of the h7 and then that goes up underneath the hair that just comes out on the front again we've got these fantastic shapes that are coming down just created by the dreadlocks <clears throat> now between the 9 and 10 to the right of the H we've got this string and we just got this shape so you imagine the string going round you've got a little diagonal there a little circle but then we've got it, it's kind of tied crisscrossed as it goes around and then coming underneath we've got the cross comes over the top and then coming down to about the third line there and then we've got another diagonal that goes over over that d shape that we've drawn and then 
that cross comes over there. And so you're just drawing the shape. So you're using the reference points of the lines and your shapes that you've already drawn. So again, below the 11, we've got a nice, so you can see just a simple X shape. And you can flesh out that string. And then again, down at the bottom on the 12, we've got there a nice simple X. And that's the top line. <clears throat> and then down here it's a you've got the line coming down and then the X goes over and that's the crisscross stripes on that braid as it comes down the on his dreadlock as it literally just comes down then we've got this one here so right on the H line, we've got a kind of end of a shoelace kind of shape at the end of the dreadlock. And then the dreadlock comes up. You can see how it comes up to the eight and goes up underneath. And then we've got one coming down this way, down to the 12 inside this rectangle that we drew here. So again, just drawing a kind of wiggly line shape down the edge of the hair. Bit of a wiggle shape underneath. That comes down. And then you can see we've got braid behind so you've got that rectangle this is this kind of silvery grey braid that flows behind his hair on his waistcoat and that so we've got that circle there it's like that that's the pin going through the buckle so you can see we've got the pin that comes out. Just see, because it's kind of in line. With that braid, you know, just the diagonals coming across. That does go to about halfway point now so that's good <clears throat> now we've got this piece of hair that comes down you've got like some kind of tie end like you have on this bit some kind of leather and you've got the white hair coming out at the bottom And then you've got these shapes. So here we've got a nice oval shape of the hair. And then that twist goes up, goes just to the right of the G line on the 10. And this then goes all the way up following this line coming up here. So I'm just going to wiggle this line down Here between eight and nine, we've got some kind of little bit of string creating a pinch shape. And then that shape going all the way down. Again, on the bottom of this little disc at the bottom of this collection of beads, there's all kinds of stuff dangling underneath that we didn't put in in the shapes. But we can add them in now. So now we've got the hair going up <coughs> underneath the dreadlocks. And then we've got all of these interesting shapes. So if we start on the six line to the right of G, we've got that one that's got the swirls in. So we come down next to the G line. That just comes over. Bit of a 
little box but then you got this swirl inside and the one above yeah these are like kind of just rounded polished stones you got like highlights so I'm just indicating the highlight that you're going to leave just bare paper and you've got a bead above that's a bit more of a rectangle and the smaller one going into the hairline underneath and coming down to the seven line on the G we got this kind of peachy colored one and then you got that longer one above and these are just nice curved stones and kind of like glass and gemstone type things and we got a little ellipse underneath the seven line And we've got this little rectangle, which is a kind of little box. So you've got a little box underneath. Then we've got this silver shape. It's got curve at the bottom, curve at the top. And then you've got flat edges that stick out, some kind of shield on it. And we've got, if we come down onto the actual disc at the bottom we've got the kind of clasp that goes over that's got two line little rectangle and we've got the disc that curves around comes underneath the nine line and curves back around and joins the kind of holder and there's a little kind of crescent moon symbol there and then we want little circle there so it looks like a kind of wider bead with dark that's the highlight on the top so we've got an oval and then we've got this tube of black with that great highlight up the center <clears throat> and now you've got more simple shapes for those beads now at the bottom <coughs> we've got all of this kind of wiggly stuff coming off so we got one two three little kind of clasps holding on then underneath them you've got another little rectangle which has got that highlight on and then you've got the dangly bits that come off so down here above the 10 line we can see there's kind of two little rectangle shapes then little oval there these are like little chain links one above and then there's that chain link at the top then you got one little chain link there and then some kind of black bead that comes down and then again another chain link and just some more that come down the side of that black bead and then here we've got coming up underneath the hair the flow of the side of his waistcoat that curves up and goes round and that's the waistcoat going up now down here we've got the braid stripe And that intersects going through the H12 coming over and then on H13 you've got the very bottom one and again these kind of line up you can see like the ends so you follow just kind of shape of the waistcoat over his chest just give it a slight curve and then you want the line down the center there's all manner of dark lurking down there so again we've now got his left hand side all done now we're going to work on this buckle this amazing buckle 
So here we've got within these shapes that we drew nice curves. So we're going to start at the top on the inside and it's a kind of moustache shape like a W and that's the curve and that comes over to the kind of halfway point and then that comes straight down to the edge and you've got the leather that comes through and you've got the edge curving round and the dark comes out on that triangle at the bottom comes up to the 14 line curve across and then we've got again you've got a W shape can you see there a nice simple W shape and that's the bottom of the edge of the belt buckle and then here you can see we've got like a figure eight so you can just see me drawing that figure eight shape and that's what makes that edge of the shape and so we're then going to you can see we've got a B on the edge so it comes out through the G line between 12 and 13 back through, back out, curve around to join the top of that W that you drew. And the curve goes up to the point that goes through that holds the belt in place. And you've got the edge of the belt going up just to the right of the F line on F12. And then the edge of it curves and then we go up and the point so the mirrored image of that up here is going to repeat over so we've got to repeat what's down here up at the top now before we go any further we want to do the holes that are inside so in this B at the top a little dark hole there And inside this W, so we'll do the inside of the belt buckle. This curves over, down through the 13, down towards the F line. And this is just a V that matches. So imagine like a, a kind of, you know, simple bird shape. The simple bird wings V. So you've got the, the wing going over and then coming over to the side the belt buckle and inside we've got that shape again you can see just like a nice simple diamond shape but with curve rather than points just curves at the edges mirror image on the left hand side going through the F line very dark down here so we want the curve to match that and that's the belt buckle now again there's some patterning on there <clears throat> and we'll come back and stick that on but I'm going to just indicate where the shadow is as you can see it's like dark from this part of the belt going through to the buckle <clears throat> now at the top we've got it's not completely mirrored so we want coming through the E line and we've got a curve going up to the 11 and the point goes up through the F line. 
just comes down the outside. Follow down, come through and through the 12. See, there's so many complex shapes, <clears throat> but just take your time and enjoy it. Just keep looking at your reference and your points. And you'll see what and where you need to draw. So that line comes out and goes up and joins there. <clears throat> Then we've got the rebates, the holes in the belt buckle edge. Again, diamond shape, <clears throat> but with rounded parts. A dark curve comes down. And then Right, there we've got that line, that little shape, the same on this side, just a dark kind of shape. You can see the belt buckle starting to really show. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if we come up, we want, we've got to follow the line of the belt buckle, the belt strap coming up just below that intersection on the E10 and the belt goes up goes through the 9 line and halfway through the D between the 9 and the 8 it just goes up behind that braid there and here we've got a nice simple shape of the shirt collar comes down And then here we just want that curve of the fold going over and that's the shape underneath <clears throat> and we've got this little shape coming out underneath from the belt strap that curves around dark line over the top now we have a strange goatee plaits. So we've got the little bead there, little rectangle, that red bit underneath, and then the hair kicking out underneath. And we've got the shapes coming to his chin, <clears throat> and then this curves up and goes past the F. goes up his jawline where that braid goes up there and this curves over comes down the E so you've got this kind of inverted V but here you can see again you've got this W shape nice and simple and that's the goatee coming down the bottom of his chin so Just went a little bit far over. So this is on the quarter line. So imagine there's halfway, there's a quarter. We've got that going up, goes up to where his jawline is, and then we've got the dark going off underneath. Now we've got these plaits. Basically, <clears throat> I'm going to start from the bottom here, and they're just ellipses, like a leaf. So there's one you can see going up. And then you do the top part, You've got like a, an inverted V, like a flame, the top of a flame going up. And we want another one, and then a final one going to where it joins. And again, there's others. Now, as we look on the right hand side one, we've got. The little metal piece, the little green piece, 
and the curve comes down the bottom where it comes out of the bot bottom of the plat. Now, again, the flame goes up to just below the nine line. There's your first flame of the plat. Do a little tick inside. Then we've got the second. Third, fourth, fifth, and that kind of goes really dark there. Now we've got this plat that comes down here that we indicated just with this simple line. Now coming down to the 11, the F11, we've got some string at the bottom. So you can see I've just drawn a couple of little lines where the string comes off there and you've got a V simple shape there and then it curves over and we've got hair dead on the F line and the little knot at the bottom and then we've got these shapes of the braid going all, all the way up they're just like little leaf shapes. So up to the 10 line, there's two. And then where it comes through here, about two thirds of the way up, we've got one, two, three, four links. One, two, three, four. And another two going up to the nine line. One, two. That goes through the nine line. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five up to here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Then above the eight line, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just drawing a little shape and that just is enough of an indication because you're creating an illusion with your drawing. So now here we've got one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's inside his cheek line going up next to the beads. Now we've got those really nice bead shapes <coughs> and the braid coming down. Sharpen my pencil again. Now we're going to do, I'm going to do the outside first and then we're going to do the face last. <clears throat> Just because you don't have to do everything in a set order. Sometimes I'll literally start with the face. Or, you know, you can, and I've, you can start anywhere using the grid. It's that simple and amazing. So we are going to complete all of this very very fiddly outline before we get to the face <clears throat> the main part so we've got this braid coming up with this kind of feather that's fitted in so this is just to the right of c below the six we've got the feather coming down we've got this upturned v the kind of We've got the centre of the feather line, the spine coming down, and the hair comes around underneath. The feathers just to the right of the C comes down below the seven before it cuts back in. Then we've got the outside coming down, little wiggly ass for the hair there then we've got a coming up to halfway between five and six we have this kind of wrapping strapping around the hair and here we've got this kind of x shape in the hair coming up and then that goes off into the dark up to the lower part of his bandana now here we've got this lovely braid coming down but before we get onto that I'm going to do this disc 
So here, coming down between C and D to the 9, we've got this disc shape in the... It's below the halfway line, but it's... Just a nice, simple ellipse coming round. And then you've got that little bird shape again at the top. You've got a triangle for that highlight, little highlight left there. And you've got this kind of mouth that comes down. So there is a little kind of black band and the blonde hair goes up past that little disc. Again, this is taking quite a while, but this is the most important part. If you don't get the outline down correctly, you will have all kinds of problems. So make sure your outline and your shapes are correct before you start doing your shading. So there's that little kick coming out past the D line between 10 and 11 and the hair, you can see how it just bends. And comes down into the dark to the corner on the 13. And we've got this oblong Then we've got, again, like I say, just this nice banana shape here. We've got this banana shape of blonde hair cascading down. But here now we've got this braid between the right side of his cheek. This plait, sorry, not a braid. Yeah, braid, plait, yeah. Uh, coming all the way down next to this blonde part. So we've got this kind of little ribbon at the bottom. Again, you've got this little diamond. And then shape at the bottom. Just some stripes inside that bottom part. And we've got the shape of the braid coming up. So here we, you can see we've got a little U. And then we've got one, two, three, four, yeah, kind of four. <clears throat> These are kind of different than the other ones. So you just, you look at them again and you just figure out the shapes. And then you can literally do what you need. So I'm going to do, there's one, a bit like a coffee bean, that one is. And we got another shape, that's two. Three, little triangle, then little shape, little triangle, that's the four. And again above we've got one, two, three, four, nearly five. So you've got the side, they're like little claws really. Little leaf, you see the, and the little leaf shapes going up. So here now we've got, like I say, just a nice little V shape. Now we've got one on the edge. Shape there. Then, as we come through the six line, we've got that kind of S-shaped banana type shape. Then we've got the start of the claw again. Two. And a long one that goes through the five. That's dark behind.
And there you've got <coughs> just using those simple little shapes, little V shapes, you've got the braid going all the way up. Now, again, we've just got some right down in the dark here. We've got a triangle and then coming through. That should have gone down a little bit lower. Just going to rub that out. That's I'm going to do the lower one first. So, about on the third, on the D line, yeah, it's about there, we've got a triangle that comes through and goes back across some kind of part of his sash underneath the belt. You can just see the shapes in the dark. <clears throat> so, now we've got this kind of little ribbon braid over between A and B on the 12. Got a little circle underneath. Then you've got this hair that's going again, just like a nice simple banana shape. And you can see how that goes up the hair from here coming behind the back, cuts through below the B and 11. And we've got this long rectangle that's connected. Again, just some kind of braid that's going up. Diagonal for that silver, the red at the bottom. And then we've got the hair. <clears throat> so we've got this, so again, you've got a, a D shape there as it comes around, that then becomes a C coming down to the 11. So there's your C joining onto the D at the top. And that's how you can draw these swirls of hair that cascade down. So there's your C becoming a D. And then as it gets higher up, it's just more wavy. And that's the wavy parts of his hair going up and just looking following the shapes in between the grids and next to his face so now we've got coming down the side of his hair <clears throat> we've got underneath that bone you can see there's a dark shadow whether it's another piece of bone at the back, looks like it possibly could be coming down to the six. And that's going to be silhouetted. But then we've just got a shape of hair coming down. Now, we have his waistcoat coming down to the 10 on the A line. And then that just comes down into the shadow. Then we have shoulder, this line coming down underneath the A9, and that goes off. <clears throat> and then we just got some creases. And uh, that dreadlock going down off his back. <clears throat> so that's all. his outer part done and now we've got to do his face on the inside so just sharpening the pencil getting a nice sharp point <clears throat> and we're going to start on Jack Sparrow's eyes so if we start with the left eye inside the shape so we're just to the right of the F on the five line you can see we've got so there's the center in between the two the white side is just inside the center so we need a nice simple U line it kind of comes down and touches the five and then just curves back up and we've got inside just that little V 
where is T a duct is. And you've got that nice kind of straight line going up over his eyeball and then it kicks down to the white. And you've got the dark going around the outside so we can extend that. It kind of comes to the third. Now just to the left of the F line you've got the edge of his tear duct and then just to the right of the F line you've got the start where outer part of his irises and you want to curve that down and it curves up and you see you've got that triangle of white left now I'm going to leave putting a circle in there for the highlight and I've just filled in the pupil a bit. Straight away you can see we have now an eye actually looking out at us. Now again I'm concentrating on the outline. So we now have a dark line just tracing underneath the upper part of his lower eyelid. Then you've got this black U, so you've got this kind of black banana very overripe banana underneath his eye or you could just say a slug and that's going to be very dark and that curves up and it's just to the right of the center line and you can see it's in line with the center of the pendant above and that's whether you put in your shapes in and then doing your detail drawing line correctly Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this. This is absolutely fantastic. So now we can see we've got to do his right eye. So you can see where his tear duct is and it cuts across the E line. We've got this diagonal that goes up to about the third. And then it kind of goes flat. over the pupil and then kicks back down then we want this nice crescent and it's above the five line of the dark of his lower eyelid and that curves back up and we got a little kick for his tear duct and you want the dark line Above, and then that goes right into the corner eye socket through the E and curves down. Now just inside the D line we've got the edge of the black of his makeup on his eye socket. But the top line needs to go out level past the corner of the white of his eye. That keeps going over and then you get a little diagonal down. Then we can bring the shape <clears throat> down through the five line and then the V comes up and joins E5. There's another little line crease line underneath. Now I want the nice semicircle for the outer part of his iris. Then again draw in a circle for the highlight and then the dark of his pupil in. 
Now we've got the shadow cast by the top of his nose and underneath the bandana that shadow goes over. Now we come down his right nostril is right on the E6 line. And that just curves down a little bit to the front of his nose and the front of his nose it's not it's kind of flat coming across and then it curves up just inside the F line. And you got the side of his nostril goes up. And then the right nostril, you've got a C shape here. So you've got that C that goes up to about the third and comes over and you can see we've got this fantastic highlight but it's not straight it bends with the shape of his nose so that comes down that goes up and then you've got the shadow down this side of his nose just inside the F line We've got the curve of the shadow on the top of his cheek that comes over down through this X. So we can just indicate this X a little bit stronger now. Then his cheek comes down. They're just the nice simple shapes. Now <clears throat> Here on this side you can see we've got like a nice big Y shape. That's his cheek on this side. See there, top of a Y curves down and that's that crease line on the side of his cheek. Now, the left hand side of his moustache comes right on the seven line. And you can see here we've got to match him with his eye. So it's the rectangle we did was a little bit far over but this is where you correct things with your line as you go so here as it curves around you can see we've got this D shape and this goes up so coming off from underneath his nostril his left nostril we've got it isn't straight it just curves down and then kicks over and then from Underneath the centre, we've got it comes down over the top lip, comes over and then curves around. His lower lip touches the seven line, but it's not dead centre. It's more the centre of it is here, kind of on the third line. So you want that to then curve up. Go through the E, up to the corner, and lightly that goes up and joins the F line. And then darken the line in between his two lips, and then here through the E line, we've got this curve of the hair from his moustache coming down. On the right hand side and then from underneath his nostril it literally just kicks over and you've got this diagonal coming over between D and E. You can see here pretty much right on the centre where the moustache comes down so this side it's lower and comes underneath whereas this side it's above the seven line. We've got this little V shape. 
and bring that up and that touches where his lower lip is the of his lower part of his upper lip where the moustache comes down under and then we can bring the curve over and that's the moustache in place then we've got these tufts coming out again it's this kind of it's a bit like a strawberry shape and that's the goatee underneath his lower lip and that's a really good outline it's very complex but that's what we've got done now so far and we need to just put now on all the interesting detail say in the bandana and the clothes so we're going to put that on before we erase all the grid lines just sharpening my pencil again now we're going to quickly he says <clears throat> indicate all of these patterns that are inside Jack's bandana so we've got all of these leaf patterns that are well just very simple but we're going to do them quick so if you want if you want to do this absolutely photographic you've got to spend a lot longer than I'm doing now but this is where <clears throat> so like I say some of my hyper real if you look at Nathan Heaney or <clears throat> there will be a time lapse of a drawing I did of uh, Marcus Rashford the footballer and a lot that they were days so literally four or five days drawing so but we're doing this kind of quickly so what we've got is I'm going to start with this flower so we're in between E and F and three and you can see we're just to the left of the, the beads here so there's a little triangle now again I I'm drawing this just using simple shapes there's a little triangle but I'm also not drawing them very very hard because I don't want them to be as black a line as these so I'm just trying so I've started with that flower in the center so to the right of it we've got that looks like a letter a capital E as that carries on we've got a kind of branch that goes out kicks back at the bottom of this E it's a, what looks like a kind of leaf coming off the flower so here we've got flower going down and then another larger flower so this is on the F4 interchange again when the tone goes on and we kind of detail this up a little bit more later so here you've got what looks like a kind of little love heart that comes down and I'm just following where the shapes are and it kind of fits in you can see where it's just above the eye then on the F line there's another little leaf another little leaf there's a flower little flower head again this is just nice and quick I'm doing these really really quickly little oval shape there we've got a line with little couple of legs sticking down and that's just over from that leaf wiggles just some kind of wiggly leaf shapes and this is just to give an impression I'm trying to 
give you the skills to create with a pencil you're creating an illusion as we come over now on this side the pattern kind of becomes thinner as it goes around the corner and the lights on this side but it's still there so down here we've got a little leaf Reese, two lines going off. A little leaf there on the G line. Going up past that knobbly bit of bone or ivory. Again, right over here, we've got a kind of little heart shape. And I'm just indicating where I'm seeing tones and it'll help when we come to do the bandana fully so here we've got another large leaf shape goes right across that intersection of F and 3 line underneath leaf shape Nice little diamond type leaf. Two leaves on top of one another. There's another one underneath. Right on the intersection we've got on the fall line. Stem and some leaves going up. So now here next to this pendant we've got one that goes up through the F line and goes up through the two curves back up. That's just like a nice big stem. Wow this is just absolutely fantastic. So here we've got stem that comes off and what looks like a leaf are right in the center so kind of above the center line got a little stem that goes off leaf above heart shaped leaf there's that leaf right next to the F line one that goes through There's the two leaves. Kind of lines just going around. So you can see we've got half the bandana done already. And that's just a few minutes so there's kind of nice big shape and again you, you can be as detailed as you want little kind of heart up there or there's a heart shape there you know, just put a general indication like I'm trying to do and when you focus on the eyes everything will fall into place and you'll see that as the shading goes in. So we've got one, two, three little dots. Here we've got it's like a kind of lady's body with a skirt. Stem going up. Here we've got little lots of little squiggle lines here. And again, this is where on KSI's it was incredible. So here we've literally got a W 
There is a W there. You've got lots of little paisley shapes, whereas this is quite leafy, random squiggles. So here we've got a kind of bird V. Squiggles going up. And then brilliant and here we've got a little C shape wiggles another one heart shape and come down underneath the three line between D and E got a kind of little wiggle for a bird there Then we've got two circular shapes there, squiggles coming off. One right on the E line. And you can see it's just all matching really nice. Squiggle for that leaf next to the flower that we actually started with. Now, now we're getting somewhere. That goes off. We've got a heart shape there in the centre. Some kind of little f flex coming off from it. I mean, you could literally just put lots of squiggles in and it would look kind of right. But if you just put them in the general place and direction where they are you've got that impression that you're creating the pattern that's actually there but here I'm just literally just squiggling just putting some in and you can see there's no difference there to what you can see over here and it'll all build up as we develop more detail when we put the shading in and oh is that going to be fun So here we've got some more leaf shapes down in the shadow area. A little heart shape there. Indicate some little squiggles on the side. And that's all the squiggles on his bandana in. Now, down on the belt buckle, we've got kind of what looks like Paisley. So this is really like uh, KSI. And there's what looks like a kind of Paisley shape in the dark. Small one over the top. Now you've got a triangle there with triangles inside. And these will all be kind of highlighted. kind of leaf shape you can even see the patterning through and underneath the holes in the belt buckle so again the edge of the leather you can put a second line going up And then it's too much dark on on this side, but on this side we can see again just kind of triangle shape. That's a bit like a snail shell, kind of heart leaf shape. And this is just like kind of fine, nice embroidered cloth. So I'm just indicating 
what looks like the kind of pattern. So up on his shoulder, here we can see we've got there's a circle, it's a bit like kind of Aladdin's lamp that is. And then the squiggles just go round and come down upon the shoulder. That is pretty good. That's getting somewhere. Now we need to erase the grid lines. So like I say, we've got all that down and I'm going to be very careful so that I don't lose all of that detail that I've just put in. So this is just my standard Mars plastic thick eraser. Just the one I've used for years and I really enjoy it. Now, because I'm I've put the lines on so dark, I'm holding the page with my right hand and I'm using the paper to stop me from smudging it. But I'm just rubbing out all the big areas first. And then we can erase, quite it's tough, bit of a workout this is. Oh gosh it is and all. And so I've cleaned out now around the top of Jack Sparrow's head. And now we need to clean kind of within the hair but there's so much detail that you've got to be careful this is why like I said to you I this is going to be quite destructive to the drawing if I carry on using this one but we have ways and means so this is why I said to you you do not have to draw your grid on as dark as I do. I just do that so that you can see it. So draw it on quite lightly, even use a 2H pencil or something like that. So I drew my grid with a 2B pencil. And this is as important to your drawing because you don't want these lines showing up underneath your drawing at all. Now, so far, he says, we're doing quite well. Now, I have a piece of card and I just use this old big soft brush So that I don't sweep off smudge while I'm sweeping off just nice and gently and then literally scoop it into the bin I used to just br brush it on the floor I've said many times and that's rather dumb hey this is a Mars plastic and a pen kind of eraser it just means I can get a little bit more detailed control and I've also got an electric eraser I'll probably be using that in a bit but this allows me to get quite a lot of the lines out within the shapes without destroying the underdrawing but it's vitally important that 
you are very careful at this stage because you don't want to destroy all the hard work that you've done. Again you can see I can actually remove where necessary quite a lot using this even though it's relatively chunky but you can get in the tip of the Stettler mechanical pencils that I use on my drawings they've got a finer rubber but as I've said I've got an electric eraser that can allow really good detail and then I've got a Tombow as well and that's for really good fine highlights and fine areas so I also use a putty eraser which you can knead into a fine point so I'm literally just looking around seeing where I need to remove the lines and it should help quite a lot and this is I say that's got quite a bit out I hope I just push that through too much it's better Now I'm going to sweep off again what I've just done so I can see what needs to be removed carefully. So this is my electric eraser again this gives me much more directional control though that's actually that's actually smudging So again, you have to be careful So this is inside the bandana now Just trying to remove as much of those construction lines So that they won't show up so it's kind of easy you can either do it a square at a time or a line at a time and that way you know that you've pretty much got everything so here I'm just trying to remove on his nose and around his eyes within that hair next to his cheek underneath that's pretty good but a lot of the detailing up that we do and a lot of the shading will actually cover over a lot of these lines but it's just helpful if you can get rid of them On there right up the side of his nose inside the nostril <sighs> so 
so he says last bit of sweeping off and that is definitely a good foundation for us to build our drawing of Captain Jack Sparrow as played by Johnny Depp in the Pirates of the Caribbean films to life with shading. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Next we're going to do the shading and that's really good fun.